Today I want to cover an interesting story coming out of Scotland. Recently, authorities in Scotland were presented with a petition to block the construction of a fish farm on the Isle of Skye. And the reason being is because the petitioners believe that this fish farm would disturb the fairies that live underwater. And also because they feared for the people who would eventually fish there. They believe that these fairies might seek revenge. Now after this petition, construction on this fish farm was stopped. The petitioners won, which is amazing. The people in this region, especially on the Isle of Skye, really respect their folklore. Now it is believed that these fairies bathe in the moonlight once every hundred years or so. And if they come in contact with still, they will die. And if this fish farm was constructed, there would be a lot of still cages in the water. It is also said that these sea fairies, if threatened by humans, would protect themselves by luring us into the water with gold or jewels. And if successful, that human would never be seen again. Now this story reminded me of a case in Zimbabwe when they were building a dam. The locals told them not to build this dam because it would make the mermaids that live there angry. But of course they didn't listen. And while they were building this dam, the workers claimed that they were being attacked by mermaids and some of them even disappeared never to be seen again. And what fascinates me is here we have almost the exact same folklore in Zimbabwe that we have in Scotland, which blows my mind. And these fairies that allegedly live underwater in Scotland are not necessarily little beings with wings. They could also be described as mermaids. Now there are some interesting sightings of fairies in this region, which I have covered before. But since that video was released a long time ago, I'll go over a few of my favorites. In 1884, a milk cart driver on the Isle of Man was off doing his rounds one day when he encountered a group of fairies. And according to the milk cart driver, these were not very nice fairies as they stopped the driver and threw all the mail bags onto the road. Then they started to dance around the bags. Now this made the milk cart driver very angry so he got off his cart and one by one placed the bags back onto the cart. But these fairies were not having it and they kept throwing the mail bags onto the road. And this went on for hours and hours until the fairies finally had enough and went away. And when the milk cart driver finally arrived back to the station, he told everybody what had happened to him. And his fellow co-workers started to laugh. But some of them did wonder if he was telling the truth as there have been reported sightings of these tiny fairy-like creatures on the Isle of Man going back for centuries. Another alleged encounter happened in 1853 in Ireland. One day a boy named Neil Colton was out behind his house with his brother and female cousin when they started to hear some strange but very beautiful music playing. So they went to go see where this music was coming from. And when they climbed over a rock, they saw a group of tiny people dancing and playing instruments. And when these tiny people noticed that they were being watched, one of them ran towards Noah's cousin and struck her in the face with what seemed to be an odd looking branch. Now these kids were terrified so they ran as fast as they could back to their house. And on the way back, Neil's cousin dropped to the ground. And it appeared to them that she was dead. So Neil ran to go get a priest. And this priest was able to bring her back to life. Making me wonder if she just passed out. But the priest was not shocked at all by their story and he said that they were very lucky that they were able to get away. As most of the time when people come face to face with these fairies, they tend to disappear. Another interesting sighting happened in 1862 when two men David Evans and Evan Lewis were driving through Wells when they decided to stop for a nice little rest near a farm. And while the two men were resting, Evan spotted something rather strange. He saw a line of at least 50 or so figures going up the side of a hill. Now Evan and David were pretty far away at the time, but they came to the conclusion that these people, or whatever they were, had to be extremely small. So Evan and David, very curious, wanted to get closer to find out what the heck they were looking at. And while they were walking, they realized that these were in fact really, really small people and they were dancing in a circle. Then they disappeared as if by magic right into the side of a hill. Then they reappeared one by one and started to dance again. Then they disappeared before Evan and David could get there. Now these two men just could not stop talking about what they had just seen. They were shocked. Then they saw an old man walking on the side of the road so they ran towards him and told him what they had saw, hoping that he could shed some light on these mysterious tiny people. And this old man, well, he wasn't surprised at all by their story. He told Evan and David that throughout the centuries, there have been a lot of sightings of these tiny magical people in this area. Another strange sighting comes from a children's book author, Mary Tregold. One day Mary was riding the bus on the Isle of Mule in 1973. 
While she was riding the bus, the bus pulled off to the side of the road to let another car pass. And while the bus was stopped, Mary noticed a very tiny man with a shovel digging a hole. At first she wondered if it was a statue, but as she kept looking she realized that this tiny figure was moving and he was digging. Mary estimated that this tiny man must have been only about 20 inches tall. She also noticed that his blue overalls were glowing. Now Mary sat there on the bus in total shock just watching and wondering if what she was seeing was actually real. Now Mary only saw this tiny figure for only a few seconds or so, but that bus ride changed her life. She never believed in fairies or magical creatures, but after seeing this tiny man with her own eyes, made her a full-blown believer. And to me, this tiny person kind of sounds like a garden gnome. Now these sightings of fairies, or tiny magical creatures, don't just happen in Europe. One alleged sighting happened in 2005 in Pennsylvania when a man John and some of his friends were hiking deep into the forest. And while they were enjoying the warm summer evening, they started to hear some odd noises behind them. And when they turned to look, they saw a creature that was only about 10 inches tall. And whatever this was had a human head, pointy ears, and something wrapped around his body, and it was floating in midair. Now John and his friends were speechless. They just stared at this creature in awe. Then they realized that this was a tiny woman with wings, and it also possessed a very odd greenish-like glow. Then it flew away back into the thickness of the forest. Now, they couldn't believe what they had just seen with their own eyes, and they stayed up all night trying to find it again. And after a lot of arguing and debating, they all agreed that it had to have been a fairy. And still to this very day, they searched these woods hoping to come face to face with this creature again. There are also many stories of magical creatures coming from the Native Americans. One of them I just covered, the Little People of the Cherokee. And then there's also the Pugwudgie, which I'm going to cover in a future video. Now what fascinates me is there are so many ancient cultures throughout the world that never had any contact with each other. And most of them, if not all of them, all have legends or folklore of tiny magical beings. Making me wonder, could these magical entities actually exist? Until next time, this is Paranormal Junkie. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned.